In this video, we're going to take a look at using Excel in probability distributions. So for the first one, we're just going to look at an expected value in a discrete a distribution. Then we're going to look at the binomial, Poisson, and hypergeometric distributions. And we're going to look at PDF and CDF for each, which means the probability of just one value or a cumulative probability. So PDF means probability distribution function, CDF means cumulative distribution function. So it'll make much more sense once you start to go through these examples with me. The first example we will look at has to do with expected value in a discrete random variable. And what we mean when we say discrete is that the outcomes can only take on specific values, not a range of values. For instance, if I roll a die, there are six possible outcomes, one, two, three, four, five, or six. Now, when you're making a probability distribution, you don't necessarily need to have a, a separate column for each of those values. What I can do is, for instance, in this example, it says, suppose I play a game that cost five dollars to play. If I roll a one, I win. So the roll, one of the rolls will be a one. If I roll a six, I get to keep the five dollars. And then if I roll anything else, which is a two, three, four, or five, then I'm losing. Okay, so I'm going to center these. So I could have a separate column for two, three, four, and five, except I know that the outcome of that is going to be the same and the probability of that is going to be the same. So let's take a look. The outcome, if I roll a one, is that I win $100, but keep in mind that it cost me $5 to play, so my actual outcome is that I won $95. The outcome of a six is if I roll a six, I get to keep the five, which means I didn't actually lose anything. If I roll a two, three, four, or five, then I'm going to lose my five dollars, so that's minus five. Now, what is the probability that I roll a one? The probability that I roll a one is on a six-sided standard die is one divided by six, so equals one divided by six. The probability, probability that I roll a six is the same, which is one divided by six. And I suggest that you don't write in 0.166 repeating. I suggest you let Excel calculate the value for you. Now be careful on this one. The probability that I roll a two is one out of six, and three is one out of six, and four is one out of six, and five is one out of six. So total, that is four out of six. So this is where you have to be careful. I could have made a separate column for two, and then that probability would be one six, and for three, and that probability would be one six, and you get the idea. So I've chosen to consolidate those because I knew this outcome of negative five would be the same each time. Now, in order to find the expected value, so what we're going to do is simply use the sum product function. And the sum product function, it says returns the sum of the products of corresponding arrays or ranges. So the keyword there is corresponding. If I choose array one, I'm choosing all of the outcomes. Notice I'm only choosing those three values. I don't care about the one. I don't care about this row up here. Um, I only care about the outcome row. And then I'm going to separate that with a comma and then I'm going to choose the corresponding, so notice there's still just the three values, the corresponding probabilities. This is exactly the way we found our weighted average, because that's what this is, is a weighted average. So my expected value is 12.5. So the question is, is this a worthwhile game to play? Yes. Why is that? Because my expected value is 12.5, which means I expect to win an average of 1250 every single time I play. So yes, absolutely, play this as many times as you are able to play it. Let's take a look now at the binomial distribution. And the binomial distribution is a distribution where we have two outcomes, success and failure. So even though there are technically six outcomes when I roll a die, I know that the only 
success, the only outcome considered a success in any of these three questions is if I roll a one. Whereas if I roll a two, three, four, five, or six, it's considered a failure. So it's okay to use the binomial distribution for these questions. And the function that we'll use is binom.dist. And Excel is pretty handy because it comes up with exactly what you need to plug in. So if you ever get stuck, you can always click on it and it will tell you what you need to do in a new um, web page. So what I'm going to look for is the first value should be the number of successes. So number underscore s is number of successes. For question one, it's exactly three ones. So the number of successes is three out of a total of six rolls. So that's the number of trials. The probability of rolling a one on a die is one six. So one divided by six and I suggest that you do it that way and not try to plug in the probability yourself unless it's an exact probability like one-fifth which would be 0.2 or one-half which would be 0.5. If it's a decimal like this 0.16666666 forever then use the actual fraction. Cumulative tells Excel whether or not you want all of the values up to and including three three being this value that I put as the very first value, or if you want only three. So if I want only three, which is what I want for question A, exactly three, I'm going to use false. I do not want a cumulative. Now notice, I can type zero for false, or I can type the word false. If I want to use true, I either type the word true, or I type one. So that's all we have to do for question A. For question B, the probability of rolling at most, oh, that is not probability, probability of rolling at most two ones in six rolls of a die. Now this one's going to be different. Now the long way, and you are not to do it this way, the long way would of course be to find zero, one, two, and then add all of those values together because at most two ones would be zero ones, one one, or two ones. Now the way that we're going to do it is instead to use the binom dist function and we're going to include the number two, so at most two, out of six, probability of one six, and this is going to be true because true tells Excel to start it two and go all the way down to zero, zero, one, and two, which is exactly what I want. So notice these two values are the same. Now question C, those are the trickiest. So this one says at least. At least are the trickiest because you have to remember two separate things. And of course we could do it the long way. So I did it the long way just so you could see that our answers will match. The long way is three ones, four ones, five ones, six ones, and add all of those values together. If I'm doing this using the binom dist, just one function, binom.dist, the first thing, oops, I already messed up. The first thing I need to remember is that the binom dist function, as we just learned here, takes the value and goes to the left. So I need the answers to the right, meaning at least three ones would be three ones, four ones, five ones, six ones. And so to the right, I'm talking about on a number line. So I'm looking for numbers three and greater, which means I'm going to find one minus the distribution of two or less. So why am I doing two or less? Because we know and again, what I just typed in here was exactly actually what I had up here. Why did I use two or less? Because if I think about all of the outcomes, I could have zero or one or two or three or four or five or six ones when I roll. And so this included zero ones and one one and two ones. And this included three and four and five and six. So why does this work? Because if I take one minus zero, one, and two, it's going to give me 
3, 4, 5, and 6 because we know that the sum of the probabilities of a sample space always adds up to 1. Our next distribution is the Poisson distribution and in this we are looking at the probability of a certain number of successes in a certain amount of time. And so the most important value that we need for a Poisson distribution is the average value. So here's an example. Let's say it takes me 10 minutes to grade a unit project. Now I have two follow-up questions, both dealing with one hour. So what I need to do is think about the fact that if it takes me 10 minutes to grade a unit project, what is my average? How many projects on average, which is lambda, will it I grade in an hour? So if it takes me 10 minutes to grade a unit project and there are 60 minutes in an hour, then 60 divided by 10 is 6. I can expect to get 6 unit projects graded in an hour. This is super duper important. If you get this part wrong, the rest of it is just going to be wrong. So for the first question, I'm looking at the probability of grading eight unit projects in an hour. So if I'm used to grading six. I'm saying, what if I pushed really hard and tried to get eight done? What's the probability of me being able to do that? So again, I'm going to use Poisson distribution and the first value is X and that is essentially the number of successes. So that in this case is eight. The mean is the lambda, the average value. How many do I normally get done in that amount of time? And so in one hour, I usually get six done. Cumulative is just like we talked about with binomial. Do I want exactly eight or do I want eight or fewer? And in this case, it says eight unit projects. So that's exactly eight. So cumulative would be false or zero. And that's my solution. So I only have about a 10% chance of grading eight projects in an hour. The second question is going to be using the cumulative function because whenever we have something that says more than or less than, we need to know that we're going to be using the cumulative function. So again, just like in our last example, the hardest part will be which value should we include? Remember that the cumulative function only goes to the left or less than. So if I'm dealing with a more than or greater than, then I'm going to be doing a one minus because I have to take away all of the stuff that is less than to get to the stuff that's more than. So I'm going to use Poisson dist and then I have to determine should this number be a seven or should this number be an eight or should this number be a six? What makes sense? So if it says the probability of grading more than seven, that means I need eight or nine or 10 or 11 or 12, etc. I don't want to include seven because it didn't say seven or more. It says more than seven, which means the part that I'm subtracting should include the seven. If I use seven here, seven, six, cumulative, true, if I use seven, it's going to find seven and six and five and four and three and two and one and zero. And that's exactly what I want. So there is a 25.6% chance that I will grade more than seven. So eight or nine or 10 or 11 or 12 or 100. For our last example, we're looking at the hypergeometric um, probability distribution. And in this distribution, it's very similar to the binomial distribution because it does deal with successes and failures. The biggest difference is that it's dealing with a dependent probability as opposed to independent. And what I mean by that is when we roll a die, every time I roll a die, I have the same probability of rolling a one or a two or a three every single time. So it doesn't matter if I've rolled 18 times, the next, the 19th time, I still have a one sixth chance of rolling a one. Now take that compared to this situation. I have seven yellow and nine green marbles in a bag. So seven plus nine is 16 total marbles. What is the probability that exactly three are yellow? Now I'm going to draw these without replacement, which means I'm going to put my hand in the bag, take one marble out and put it to the side. 
and then I'm going to take another marble out and put it to the side, and another marble out and put it to the side, and I'm not putting them back in, and that's what without replacement means. And that's why this is hypergeometric, because the probability each time depends on what happens on the trial before. So let's take a look at the first question. The probability that exactly three marbles are yellow. I'm going to use hyper, which is hypergeom, dist. Now, this is the hardest one only because there's so many values to put in, so here's how I keep them straight when I'm doing this. The probability that exactly three marbles are yellow, the first two numbers that I'm going to enter is the number of successes out of the number of trials. So it says exactly three, so that's three out of five because I'm going to be drawing five marbles. The second set of two numbers is the number of successes out of the population. So there are seven, because I'm looking at yellow marbles, there are seven yellow marbles total out of 16. So seven comma 16. So think of them in sets of two. Cumulative is the same thing we've been dealing with. Do I want exactly three or less, three and less? And in this case, it's exactly three. So I'm going to use zero for false. And that gives me a probability of 0.2885 or about 20-ish, 29%. For B, obviously I'm going to be dealing with a cumulative probability because I'm looking at the probability that at most three marbles are yellow. So the only tricky thing here is, again, knowing is it, is it going in the right direction or do I have to subtract it from one? And then, of course, is the value of three itself included? So if I'm thinking about at most three, that means I want zero or one or two or three, so three is included. And lucky for us, remember, if I do three and then cumulative, it's going to give me all of the values below it. So that's what I'm going to do. Hype, geom, dist. Again, the number of successes in the sample would be three, because that's the first value I want out of five. The number of successes in the population is seven out of 16. This time cumulative is yes or true or one. And that gives me essentially a 92.3% chance that I get zero yellow or one yellow or two yellow or three yellow. And again, you could certainly double check that by finding each of those values and adding them together, but it's not necessary to do that. 